my name is Denny Goss. I'm from southwestern Virginia. I grew up there. I went and worked for the, uh, a bigger hospital as a hospitalist, um, and then came back to work at uh, Carilion Clinic as an emergency room physician and a hospitalist. Um, been doing that now, going on four years. Um, I also uh, do some addiction medicine in uh, uh, a pretty big company uh, there locally. So uh, I'm kind of a jack of all trades, a little bit of everything. Uh, so I'm hospitalist, emergency room, family medicine, some addiction medicine. Actually looking to try to uh, pursue uh, maybe some addiction medicine uh, certification, board certification in the future. But right now I'm family medicine board certified. actually uh, really didn't know what I wanted to do when I, when I went to undergraduate. I uh, worked at Enterprise Rent-A-Car <laughs> while I was in, uh, in, in my undergraduate, undergraduate school. Uh, came out, was a pharmaceutical sales representative for uh, AstraZeneca Pharmaceuticals. It was, it was a really good job. Uh, traveled all over the country, um, made a lot of friends, met a lot of doctors and uh, people that that inspired me, and uh, I did that for about seven years. Uh, like I said, it was a great job. I enjoyed it. Uh, but eventually, you get tired of getting beat up by doctors. That's probably one of the bad things about being a sales rep. Sometimes they they're busy. They don't have time for you. They're, they're, they're doing their own thing, and uh, you know the pharmaceutical sales industry was kind of changing. So I decided, I well, maybe I try to be a, a physician. And I, one of my mentors or friends as a physician uh, told me to look into Caribbean med schools. Uh, I was talking about cost and um, you know where I could go based on the amount of money I had and he recommended looking into it and I just happened upon St. James and uh, came down here and I guess it was 2008. Uh, you know, went through the program and uh, then went to residency at the University of Kentucky after completing St. James, um, came out, did what I wanted to do as far as uh, practicing medicine was family medicine. Best advice for getting ready for step one? Uh, I would say start doing questions. Start, start training yourself to take a test. It is a test. Uh, I know that seems simple and uh, but it, there's a way you take USMLE and the questions uh, are all um, worded a certain way that you're probably not used to seeing. So by doing that, you get yourself trained to, to seeing what the question is really asking. Uh, sometimes it's not whether you have the knowledge, it's whether or not you understand what they're asking you to say or what, what, what question they're truly asking. So that was what I did was just started taking questions, doing question banks, um, along with the studies that we had here and, and preparing just about as soon as I got on the island. And once I realized what, what USMLE 1 was, and frankly, I didn't know when I came here. And, and then, wow, this, this big, huge test over, over top of me. Uh, so I just started with question banks and studying uh, that on top of the, the regular studies that we had and, and teaching that we had. Um, so it was it was interesting, I actually remember one of the first uh, tests we took on the island was uh, worded like a USMLE question and, and, and all the students were just like, you know, up in arms, that's not fair, that's, you know, this kind of thing. And, and um, you know, the teacher was like, well, that's that's what you're coming against. And that was an eye opener for me. It was like, wow, you know, I, I'd studied so hard for that test and I had no idea what the question was even asking. So, so I understood the material. It was understanding what, how they're going to ask it, and and, and afterwards I went to the professor, and, and they helped me to understand what it was. And I think that also was something that helped me is uh, I could always go to professors at St. James, and they would help me along. Um, uh, that was certainly a, a beneficial. So I guess it's question banks, go to your professors, things you don't understand. And in those question banks and things like that, and what you don't understand in class uh, is take that to any of your mentors or your professors and, and use them as a tool and, and always be proactive. It's certainly not something that anybody's gonna hand to you. 
to, to be successful after after you've made it through step one uh, to be during during your clinicals is probably well, my my best advice is never ask what time you get off, never ask what days we can go or what time we can go home. Those are all those are small things, but they're things that that attendings look at. Like if they're already ready to leave as soon as they get here, it makes a bad impression. And always be mindful of that. And I know we're, we're working towards developing a good relationship and people's opinion of you uh, when you apply for residency. And that would be my number one tip for that part is, is never ask what time you get to go home. We're here to take care of patients. We're here to learn. As someone that's hungry to learn, it's easy to see. Uh, those people that really wanna be, you know, at that level and continue to, to grow in, in, in their medical education. Uh, it sounds simple and it sounds silly, but I, I've seen it. I've seen people, what time do we get to go home? What time's lunch? Those are, those are si simple things that, that I think that if someone just comes in and works, and I mean, I, of course, take your lunch, go home, all those things, rest, you have to have rest. But I mean, th that, was, that was one mistake that I saw. I was like, oh, wow, I, I wouldn't have said that. But as far as being being successful is is always a positive attitude. Always be happy that you have the opportunity to be there in the in the hospital taking care of people when so many that tried to get to where you are didn't make it. And that's what I would say. When I was there, I would always try to remember that, you know, there's a lot of people that, that wanted to be where I'm at. And even on a bad day, I would say, you know what? A year ago, you were killing yourself to try to be where you are right now. So it's always take that into context, even on a bad day, a tough day, that you worked really hard to be at that point. And then whenever you work, goes toward that, that same type of thinking, it's easy to be seen by the people that are watching. And they're always watching. The attendings are always watching their students. And like I said, a positive attitude by far, in my opinion, is one of the things that, that'll really make you go a long way when people are looking for potential residents. Uh, you know, they know you know medicine. Uh, almost, you've passed the assembly, you've proven that. Uh, they see work ethic, that's one thing they're watching for. Another thing is that you get along with other people. So when, when you're looking for a resident, in my opinion, it seems as though they want someone they can get along with uh, someone that's going to do the work, someone that cares about their patients. Um, so not necessarily in that order, but those, those are key things. And then like I said, the, those come with just being grateful for where you are and being mindful of the environment and, and working hard every day, showing up early, staying late. Those are things that I did. Um, but again, it's not to say it has to be done that way. I'm sure each person can find their own, but that would be my advice. Find the tough attending. Find the tough professor. You'll see students clamoring to get away from that one professor it makes you work really hard. What you don't realize at the time is everything that they teach you and how hard they push you is invaluable. You're you're gonna you're gonna grow and learn so much. I, I had one when I was there, and I, I would try to find the tough guys, the hard the hard professors. Uh, I think I had a lot of relationships, hopefully. I felt like before I started, even before I went to St. James to begin with, and as I kind of reached out to a uh, medical director and said, hey, I'm going to the Caribbean, you know, and uh, I'm gonna try to be a, I'm trying to be a doctor someday. And most of them were like, oh, well, that's good for you, you know, but they, they knew my name. And, and from time to time, send an email and say, hey, I made it this far. I'll, I'll be sending you a resume at some point. And, I, hopefully that helped me. Uh, I think it did. I was building a relationship with people. And again, I feel like residency, if you make it to that point, most of the time, what stands out is that they know your work ethic and that, that you can get along with other people and uh, that you can take care of your patients. So well, hopefully it's a big pool they have to pick from. And by having some type of relationship, certainly helpful, I would think. Um, uh, it's just as if you refer a friend, uh, something like that. And when someone goes to hire you, they look at people that, that give them high recommendations and build a, a, a rapport, again, not overly, uh, not aggravate them. Uh, that was one thing that I did do, uh, was just 
reach out and say, hey, I, I'd like to, I, I'm, I'm gonna shoot to come back here someday. And, you know, and, and I actually started that whenever I, I think before I even took off to come to the island. By far is so that when students apply, they know there's people out there that have made it, uh, people that have succeeded and hopefully everybody together saying, hey, this can be done. Helps the school to grow and to be better. I mean, this is where I went to school. Uh, when someone says, hey, where'd you go to school? I say St. James and they know where it is and I'm proud of it. Uh, and the more the school grows, obviously it's better for me and it's better for other students and, and to pay it forward. Uh, ultimately, uh, I managed to be here because St. James provided me that opportunity uh, to work hard and, and to grow and to go on. So uh, being part of the Alumni Association helps with that, you know, particularly in situations where you can tell other students and, and, and go with other alumni and, and tell students about the program. And that, like I said, they do have the opportunity to become a physician this way. Honored. I was so excited they asked me to do it. Um, a little afraid. I'm like, you know, what, what is this? You know, is it, what am I supposed to do? Because, but it, it was actually really easy as far as from my perspective. I know things I saw I wish could change. Uh, so it does give me a voice uh, when we talk about things that can maybe help students be better. Uh, so it's certainly exciting to do that. And I never imagined that I would would be there because like I said, when I was a student, I would have loved to have known any doctor that made it out of St. James and was actually practicing. So it, the, to be on the board of trustees, I'm on, you know, it's, it's amazing. Uh, um, and I'm really humbled uh, by, by the, how much work goes into everything and, and all the things that, that students don't see and don't realize uh, the politics and, and, and it, I don't mean that in a bad way, the government regulations and uh, so much that, that the, the, the people at St. James are, are having to, to jump through to make these things happen. Um, I mean, it's not like you just open a medical school and go here, let's, let's, start, let's start teaching students. And, it was, and I've learned that personally more being a board of trustee and looking back on what the things that I questioned when I was a medical student and I can see more now, wow, how hard they fought to get the school moved to the level that it is now and, and watching what they have planned for in the future. So, I mean, it's just definitely an honor. Uh, and like I said, I never imagined that I would get to be part of it. And hopefully by being part of it, maybe maybe the school will be, have, have a little bit input from, from a student um, and continue to, to orient things that they may be concerned about, which it seems like they are, certainly. Uh, and they asked that question um, of me, and, and like I said, I'm privileged to be a part of it. I remember when I graduated residency, one of my favorite attendings did this speech. Then he said, congratulations. You've now signed up for a lifetime of listening to people complain. And I thought it was funny, but he's like, but you've also graduated with the ability to save lives, change lives, influence people. And when you have those little moments, it's just remember that that you are going to have those little moments, but is keep looking at what you've done to, to get to that point and what you can do with the knowledge that you have. Um, so I guess it is just to try to change your mindset. Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, I think it's gonna happen even whenever you're in attending is days when you just have a bad day. And I don't know that there's anything. I, like I said, I've worked in uh, pharmaceutical sales. I, I've worked since I was 16 years old and I've never found a job where every day I was like, that's great. But as far as uh, medical school, like I said, it, it can be a little, bit, a little bit more daunting because it seems like it drags on just more than one bad day. But ultimately that hopefully by seeing that there is an end, there is, there is there's a means to an end. Eventually you'll get to the point where you are truly making impact in people's lives. And then you get those, those really good patients or that, that, that really good day that, that it just helps energize you for the rest of them. I think that, that for me, why I chose family medicine, when I grew up, I grew up in rural Southwestern Virginia 
uh, the doctor did everything uh, from you know hospitalists to seeing them in the clinics and I, I really wanted I had, a, I had mentor or people that I was grew up around and saw that and I wanted to be that that whole doctor that whole country doctor that was my idea and that's what family medicine was so um, for me that was what kind of led that that idea to go family medicine and, and just do everything and, and that was kind of my intention but of course unfortunately the the, the landscape of healthcare has changed. Uh, it's very difficult to do that. Now, there are people that still do it, and I congratulate them. But as for me personally, it was going more toward um, doing the hospitals, which I really enjoyed. And then um, I think my, as my confidence level grew uh, as a hospitalist, uh, I had some colleagues that wanted me to see if I would enjoy emergency medicine, and which I did. I, I do. I still work at emergency medicine and enjoy it very much. As far as the uh, telling students what to do, how to figure out what works for them. I think probably one of the things is being realistic uh, with yourself uh, and as far as applying to residency. Um, it's, a, it's a fact. I mean, there are residencies that are super competitive. You know this. Unless you take a hard look at what yourself and say, you know, this is, am I competitive for this residency? Uh, then, you know, apply for position that you know that that you have interest in you want to be but I, I get someone wants to be whatever this super competitive residency is uh, you know find another residency and another program uh, in that maybe that might be a better fit uh, so I guess my advice for that first maybe not change especially maybe pick a, a different residency in that specialty uh, especially if you're particularly interested in it might might be beneficial um, not to say you can't apply to that one, but um, as far as what, find out what you like, what you want to do for the rest of your life, that's that's a tough one. That's a, that's a hard thing. For me, it was. I, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. I just wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help people. I wanted to do this. Um, and like I said, I wanted to be a whole doctor, but I've kind of evolved over that. So that's kind of me. Uh, I think with family medicine, it gave me the ability to do that. Um, I think people, people have a general idea of what they want to do when they go come to medical school and then uh, most time by clinicals, they're getting a good feel of what it is that really interests them. And I would advise to try it, but again, keep in mind uh, the residency that you're applying to. And, and it's easy if you do your homework to find out, you know, what it is that they that they're looking for. And I would keep that in mind when you're applying those residency. And then, and don't let that knock you down if you don't get into that residency. Uh, there, like I said, keep applying to, to different residencies. And if you want to stay in that same program. Uh, Keep, keep applying. There are certainly some are, doesn't matter where you go, are very competitive. So like I said, that's something I would keep in mind. All right, living in the Caribbean, studying medicine, probably for me was better. Uh, I actually stayed in my apartment. I went to school, I showed up early. Uh, as soon as class was over, I was back in, back in my apartment. I mean, it takes a lot of self-discipline to do that. Uh, which I think is a, a key part to trying to be successful or being su successful when you're doing it. Uh, so for me, it was helpful. I can see how, and I did see how it could hinder some people. They, they get a little distracted by the beach or going diving or doing all the things that people would like to do on an island. But I think that if you're really here, as I said before, and you're willing to work hard enough, you can learn medicine, you can, you can become a physician, but it's what are you willing to sacrifice?